Batwoman, an American superhero television series, was made for the CW. It is part of the Arrowverse and is based on the DC Comics character of the same name. In the series, there are very elaborate scenes that can only be produced with the help of CGI. There are also plenty of behind-the-scenes moments and secrets that you probably never even knew about. Stay tuned to find out all the insider info. A bad CGI moment for the series. The pilot episode of Batwoman provided a strong start to the series. Sure, it's a touch bland in comparison to some of the other Arrowverse offerings, but it's still good. The CGI used in the introduction of the titular character, however, was a major flaw. The struggle between Kate and Alice in the episode's climax was fantastic, but the shot of the newly arrived Batwoman posing over Gotham City was strange. Not only did the Batwoman in question appear to be a stunt performer rather than Ruby Rose, but the angle they were positioned at didn't match the angle from which the background was recorded, and the strange manner the cape blew didn't suit either. The uncomfortable view point detracted from the majesty of the photo, despite the fact that the green screening was not horrible. It's not just Batwoman that has shoddy CGI scenes, it is evident throughout all of the Arrowverse shows, or the majority. I'm sure we can all recall a scene where something looked a bit off or fake. However, for the most part, Batwoman had some amazing scenes that would not have been slightly possible without CGI. Secret details about Batwoman's costume. Batwoman, the city's newest caped crusader wears one of the Arrowverse's most advanced supersuits, designed by her faithful associate Luke Fox. Cameras Johnson and Nicole Kang share a behind-the-scenes look at the suit's capabilities. From power gauntlets to Kevlar padding to give Kate Kane bullet-resistant protection in combat. As they study the costume in the Batcave of the series, the two actors explain that it was made in just a mere two months. They also reveal various details about the costume. During the Arrowverse crossover event, Elseworlds, Batwoman made her first appearance, meeting the other superheroes for the first time and revealing that she had taken over the city's defender from her cousin Bruce Wayne. Kate has successfully guarded Gotham from all manner of threats thanks to her cutting-edge outfit and Luke's assistance with her many gadgets and weaponry. It isn't uncommon for these heroes or villains with the Arrowverse to have elaborate, cool costumes. I mean, the look goes hand-in-hand hand with the character, so they have to make sure it's legit. How close are the Batwoman cast off-screen? The Batwoman cast appears to be destined for each other. Their careers were supposed to cross paths in a way that almost feels miraculous now, even before they brought brought their now iconic DC Comics characters to life on the CW. Openers Nicole Kang, who plays Mary Hamilton, and Cameras Johnson, who plays Luke Fox, had met in New York City prior to their careers colliding during the Batwoman audition process. When I got to the hotel in Los Angeles, Nicole was in line, Cam explained, while recalling his audition process. We actually ran lines together in her hotel room, so during the screen test, everyone was having a pretty good time, but Nicole and I were just cackling. We were having the best time together. That chemistry instantly translated to both of their auditions when Cam mentioned in the room that he knew Nicole, and the next note he was given was, do it again, but this time pretend like you were doing the scene with Nicole. Cam said it felt like the parts belonged to them from the start. Nicole, meanwhile, had just finished working on You, another Greg Berlanti and Sarah Schechter production. When the script for Batwoman arrived in her inbox, Nicole explained, Normally I have to put in a lot of effort to crack open characters, but this time was different. It's me, I said as I read the description. From the start, Mary and I were on the same page. She told a similar account about meeting Cameras during the tryouts, and even mentioned how they celebrated booking Mary and Luke when they returned to NYC. We ran off the plane into the gate and were on the floor. Nicole explained while detailing how the news of their casting had dropped mid-flight. Me and Cam had this moment at JFK, which had never had a better significance in my life. Nicole said having Cam by her side has been one of the many gifts Batwoman has given her. We've been together since the beginning. That's why the chemistry that we have on screen has been there since day one. You can see the cast has already met each other and formed fast bonds, which only adds to their characters' on-screen performances and relationships. Why did Ruby Rose leave Batwoman? We are covering this and more right now, so don't go anywhere. So why did Ruby Rose leave Batwoman? 
Ruby Rose, like many others during the coronavirus epidemic, had some time to reflect. And after some consideration, she determined there were various reasons for her to leave her major role on The CW's Batwoman. The show did well when Ruby Rose was the lead character, as she was a huge face for the series. But it has continued to do well since her departure nonetheless. When the actress revealed her decision to leave the show after a second season in mid-May, she stated that she had not made the decision lightly, but she did not elaborate on the reasons for her departure. Rose now speaks exclusively to EW on the hurdles she faced while filming Batwoman, including the necessity for back surgery after an onset accident in 2019. She also expressed her pride in the show and how it contributed to the discussion about the necessity of LGBTQ representation on television. Rose went on to explain that part of the reason she decided to leave the show was because of her injury and recent surgery. She was struggling to film while trying to heal and recover. She continues saying, I'm so grateful that we got to achieve everything that we did, and I'm proud of everyone that worked on it. I'm proud of myself for working under sort of interesting circumstances, you know, with recovery and all. I would definitely do TV again. I just think that it was also time for me to take a break to fully heal and then return. Rose explains that part of her reason to leave was due to the pandemic and how they weren't able to film the finale episode. She explains how during her time in self-isolation, she had plenty of time to reflect and think about other things she wants to accomplish in her life. Rose explains that it was the right choice for both her and the producers, and it was a mutual decision on good terms. Continuing, she explains how she was very proud of representing the LGBTQ plus community, being the first ever gay superhero. Pretty epic for the community. The original Batwoman was Bruce Wayne's love interest. Something I don't think many Batwoman fans are aware of is that Batwoman was originally Bruce Wayne, aka Batman's first love interest even before she became a superhero. Frederick Wortham, a psychologist, outed what he considered to be a romantic-coded relationship between Batman and Robin in the 1950s. To put an end to the allegations, the comic's creative team planned to develop a new love interest for Bruce Wayne. Kathy Kane was first enamored with Batman alone, which led her to want to imitate his crime-fighting abilities. When Batman figured out who the lady behind the mask was, she became a member of the Bat family. Kathy and Bruce had a romance at one point, although it was short-lived. Despite the fact that she hadn't appeared in a comic for years, Catwoman was still the most popular love interest. Batwoman was supposed to be a Justice League member. Kate Kane appeared to be a significant figure in DC's Justice League Cry for Justice series. Batwoman was revealed to be a member of the squad and even appears on the first issue's cover. She was only there for a short time. The publisher decided to make a miniseries out of what was supposed to be an ongoing series. Instead of being a standalone book, the miniseries was utilized to set up a new Justice League title. When the sixth issue was published, James Robinson put a note in the text stating that Batwoman had not been included to the squad when the alterations were made. And there you have it, everything you need to know surrounding the Batwoman series and some behind the scenes secrets. The Batwoman series has gone through quite a bit of changes, but regardless, it has still remained a great series with a dedicated fan base and viewership. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Did we miss any good behind the scenes secrets? Which one of these surprised you the most? Let us know. But if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss any of our new and upcoming content. Thanks for watching.